Today it's a battle of the budgets. We're going to look at three of the most affordable electric cars you can buy in New Zealand to see which is better, which has the better tech, the most range and which is the cheapest. Starting with the MG4 51 Excite. Next up is the BYD Dolphin Standard Range, but the winner in price alone is this, the Great Wall Aura. But there's more to an electric car than just price. We've got to see which one of these has the most range. Well, unfortunately, the Aura is now at the bottom of the rung, 310 k's per charge. The Dolphin, however, 340 k's per charge, but it's the MG that wins this one at 350 k's per charge. But there's more to go yet. I should add though that these prices you just saw are based on the clean car discount which is going to disappear in a matter of days or weeks. So after watching this video if you like any of the cars you're going to see today my advice is to buy it today. Don't leave seven grand on the table. Obviously the winner in terms of looks if you have eyes is this the MG4. It's just a brilliant looking car. Everything about it is precise. It's one of the best looking electric cars you can buy and it just happens to be one of the cheapest. Then there's the BYD Dolphin, which I love the color combos and the interior is wild, but it is not a very exciting looking car. But then of course there is the elephant in the room, the Aura. If this is the car that you thought was the most attractive, here's something I'd like you to look at. It's called an eye test. I'm joking, of course, it's not a bad looking car, but on that note, let's talk interior design. And this is where the Aura actually does really well. It's kind of posh in here. I mean, look at this felt interior with, check out this, stitching effect going on on the seats here. I like this. It's kind of British Leyland. It's really retro. It's cool. But also the dashboard is really minimalist. Again, everything's felt lined. It's actually, it's a bit of all right. Then of course there's the MG4. It's minimalist. It's clean. It's very dark as well, but I like it. It's kind of clean and modern. But the winner in wild design is definitely this, the BYD Dolphin. Look at the color combinations. Look at the shapes. It is the most out there design. And look at this beige, beige, soft to the touch beige. When I come to power, there will be a lot more beige in the world. While we're inside the cars, let's look at the central displays. And the MG has a 10 and a quarter inch display, while the Aura has two 10 and a quarter inch displays. Yet it's the BYD that has the massive 12.8 inch display, which, as you can see, turns. And on the subject of displays, how do those reversing cameras work on them? In the MG, it's fairly limited. You've only got this little space right here. Even though it's quite a wide screen, you will still have to, as I'm doing, use your mirrors. Now the reversing camera in this is better than in the MG, but the screen is still just 10 and a quarter inches. So as you can see, I'm having to use the mirrors and the screen combined. Reversing in the BYD, however, is a piece of cake. Look at the size of this massive display here. It means that I can drive as I'm now, I'm parking right now without even using the mirrors just using this massive screen. This is why you're paying a bit of extra cash because, oh, look at this. This one also lets you have a 360 degree view. Look at this. This is faster than the Mercedes EQE I drove recently. That's a $150,000 car and had much more lag. This, look at that, that's so fluid. We'll talk more tech later, but right now let's see which car is more city friendly. The thing is though, all small cars these days are kind of fat and bloated, but the most city friendly in terms of dimensions is this one at just over 4.2 meters long. But in terms of turning circle, this one takes the cake, 10 and a half meter turning circle, but they're all so similar that let's face it, everyone gets a prize. Now though, let's look at boot storage space and the aura is acceptable as is the Dolphin, but it's the MG4 that has the most room. But what about access for dogs or potato enthusiasts? Well, once again, it's the MG that's the easiest to get into and good Lord, what a spectacle. That actually hurt. <laughs> And while there's plenty of room by dropping the back seats down, none of them are big enough to lie down in. But which of these cars has a fartment or front compartment under the bonnet? Somewhere for you to store your charging cables or perhaps potatoes. Well, unfortunately, the MG doesn't have one, but the BYD Dolphin also doesn't have one. However, the Aura doesn't have one as well. Okay, I guess you've got to put your potatoes in the boot. But what about the all-important PSC? Well, the Aura clocks in at an acceptable 41, the MG4 can handle 48 tubers, but it's the Dolphin that kicks spuds with a PSC of 73. Nice work, Flipper. If you're hauling children's seats, all three cars have two ISOFIX connections on the back seat, so everyone gets a point. All right, that was a mess. But what about room in the back? Because let's face it, this is going to be used as a family car to haul your kids around. And I'm five foot ten. The front seat is set at a reasonable level, and there's still heaps of room above my head and look at all the legroom. But what's the Dolphin like? Well, it's actually, it's about the same. 
there's maybe an inch less room above my head, but there's still bucket loads of room in front of my legs, and the seat is actually a little bit softer. But what about the MG? Well, the MG feels as if it's the snuggest in terms of foot space, but there's still a reasonable amount of leg room here, and I'm five foot ten. I've still got a couple of inches above my head, so I think your toddlers could be up to six feet tall and still ride in comfort in all three of these vehicles. But what about seat height? If you've got a spine as old as mine, which one is the most comfortable to get into? Well, all of the cars have seats that are about 61 centimeters off the ground at the front lip, which means even if you're my age, they're all really easy to get into. But which have electronically adjustable front seats? Well, the MG does not, but the Dolphin does in both driver and passenger seats, as does the Aura, surprisingly. Good job, Great Wall. But what about charging port location? Which is the most convenient to plug into when you're out on the road? Well, the charging port on the Aura is right here on the front quarter. As for the BYD Dolphin, well, it's on the opposite side of the curb in this front quarter. Not sure about that. But then, of course, the MG, they've thought about this. It's right here on the curb side, on the back, so you can reverse into a space. Don't have to worry about cables being too short. This is the winner. On the subject of charging ports, how many outlets does each car have for your devices? They all have plenty of options to recharge stuff, but one car is the clear winner. But what about a vehicle to load adapter? Can you use the electricity in this car's battery bank to power your house or your appliances during a power cut? Well, with the Aura, no, no you can't. But you can with the BYD Dolphin. Included in the price of every Dolphin, you receive one of these vehicle to load adapters. And in the MG, you also get one, but it is $322 plus GST. But that's a small price to pay for peace of mind, considering there are an increasing number of climate-related disasters right now. In fact, if you want to play your part and help reverse the effects of climate change, sign up to Ecotricity. It's New Zealand's only certified climate-positive electricity provider. That means all the electricity that you pour into your car, home or business can be climate-positive. You can actually help turn back the clock on climate change. It's easy to do, a couple of mouse clicks and you're joining the good fight. Plus, you get to save a bit of cash because it's all from just wind, hydro and solar. No dirty coal, no expensive gas. It's a no-brainer, ecotricity.co.nz. But now, back to the cars. But what about those winter cold snaps? Which of these three cars has seated heats? Well, this one doesn't. And unfortunately, neither does the Aura. But what about the Dolphin? Well, let's find out. Hi, BYD. Turn on seated heats. Okay, turning on seat heating. There you go. But enough about heating and seats and dimensions. Let's get these things on the road. But how easy is it to just get in and drive away? Well, as soon as you touch the key, the MG will unlock as long as you've got your key in your pocket. With your foot on the brake, you just select drive, you put on your seatbelt, and you go. With the Great Wall Aura, it's very much the same. As long as you've got your key in the pocket, you can just press the button, the doors will unlock, you drop it into drive, Put on your seatbelt, and that's it. Handbrake goes down automatically, and you're off. With the Dolphin, it's a similar story. As long as the key's in your pocket, you can press the button on the doorknob, open her up, and jump in. However, this one has a start-stop button, so you've got to press the brake, press the button, put on your seatbelt, give it a second, and then drop it into drive, handbrake's automatic, and you're off. Now that we're moving around, let's talk acceleration. And the Aura does actually pretty well. It has a 126 kilowatt motor with 250 newton meters of torque, and that's driving the front wheels. The only downside is, because it's got all that power in its front wheel drive, if you put your foot down, oh, it really struggles to put that power down to the road. <laughs> all that power in its front wheel drive. Although it doesn't help that it's also running on eco tires. But what is the Dolphin like? Well. That's my foot hard down, and that's all it's got to give. It's got 70 kilowatts and 180 torquing newtons, so it's not epic. But it's the MG4 that seizes the carp. Yes, this is the one that's the driver's car. It's got 125 kilowatts and 250 newton meters of torque at its rear wheels, which makes it a lot of fun. That gives it a Woo, 0 to 100 time of 7.7 .7 seconds officially. Although, to be fair, I found the 0 to 100 time in this pretty similar to that in the Aura. Generally more like 8 seconds, but those are a fun 8 seconds. But what about handling, you may ask? Well, these are three very different potatoes, and I've got to say the Aura is 
possibly the least satisfying driving experience. Maybe it's the massive steering wheel or the eco tires or the relatively firm suspension, but I don't know, something about it just doesn't fill you with driving joy. It's definitely a sensible car for regular people. This is not a driver's car. Well, the standard range Dolphin is actually not too bad. It certainly handles better than the longer range Dolphin, which has all that extra weight and makes it lurch around a little bit. This is the better of the two Dolphins, but it's still the softer, smoother riding of all the cars. Already, this feels like the best compromise out of the three cars. This has got the best, the best road handling and comfort combined. It just, it loves being thrown into little city corners. But what about one pedal driving, you ask? You know, that function that turns braking into electricity and recharges the battery? Well, here's a giveaway. Let me take my foot off the accelerator. Will it bring me to a complete stop? Yes, well in advance of the line. The Aura has it too, but as you can see, it's not instant. I take my foot off and then there's still like a one second delay before it brings me to a stop, which it does. As for the Dolphin, my foot's off and unfortunately there is no one pedal driving. So the car will just coast. You will have to use your brake to bring this car to a stop. And now that we're stopped, it's a good time to look at user interface. What do these screens do? Well, the Aura, well, it's pretty bland actually. There's not a lot going on here. Yes, the screen is lovely, 10 and a quarter inch, but if you look at the main controls here, you've got just radio, Bluetooth music, you can play USB music or video through your phone. And then of course, you've got air conditioning controls and you can go into the car settings and turn on things like the adaptive cruise or adjust the, the lane assist. You can see sometimes there's a bit of a delay to get the screen to work. In the MG, it's not that much better. We're still limited by the 10 and a quarter inch display, but we can plug in Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. They're wired, of course, and we've got some basic car functions. Although one thing this car has that I've never seen in any vehicle yet is the programmable buttons. They are not radical, but the fact that on the right hand side, I can change between normal, sport, eco, custom, snow mode, all that stuff. But on the left, these buttons are programmable and I've programmed this one to turn on the air conditioning controls. Yes, I can adjust the air conditioning without looking from the comfort of the steering wheel. Look at that, that is brilliant. So MG Management, if you're watching this, I just wanna say thank you. That is one of the coolest functions I've ever seen in a car. Other car makers, if you're watching this, follow suit, please. But it's the Dolphin that is the absolute winner in terms of user interface. I mean, look at the size of the screen in this thing. It is monstrous. It's big, it's bold. You saw before that it can turn. Also, check out this. If you've got Android, that's great, but it's also got navigation built in, its own map system if you don't have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. And it's really fast. I mean, like, there is no lag. It's got real-time traffic information as well. If you're running fleets of cars, this is gonna take the agony out of it, the thought out of it. You just put in your destination, you put in your charger, and you just, look how fast that is. That's ridiculous. Of course, it comes with loads of apps. You've got the BYD Assistant. Everything in the car is voice controlled. It's intelligent. It's like Tesla level, this stuff. It's got Spotify and a data package included in the price of every single vehicle. It also has, wait till you see this. It's got Android Auto Karaoke. It's got Amazon Music and what is, wait, what? Truth be told, I've never actually used Tinder or any dating app because Let's be honest, how could I possibly promote this product that I don't believe in? But it doesn't matter anyway, because as you can see right here on the dashboard, I've got a couple of hot dates sorted out for later. <laughs> oh yeah. One thing I will do though is try the karaoke, because in the glove box, check this out. An official BYD brand microphone that you can get. You'll be able to buy these very shortly. Does your car have karaoke built in? With a microphone? I don't think so. We're on the motorway now and it's a good chance for me to try the adaptive cruise control and the lane keeping assist. Now to do this in the EMG, I simply push the button on the steering wheel and then I select my maximum speed, which I will choose 100. And now I've taken my feet off the pedals. It's braking and accelerating for me and it's steering more or less. 
You have to keep in mind though that good lane keeping software is really expensive and these are really affordable cars so you can't expect amazing things. All three of these cars they kind of drive as if as if you're like a 15 year old learning to drive again. In the Aura to turn it on I simply double tap the stalk. There we go. There's only so much you can expect from affordable lane keeping assist but this is it's not bad. Well I've just turned on adaptive cruise and lane keeping in the Dolphin and already I think the Dolphin is perhaps the most sure-footed of the three. It's the least nomadic. It sort of stays within its lane better than the other two. And now that this car is basically driving itself, it's doing all the steering and braking and accelerating for me, let's talk efficiency. And you might think that the Aura would be the most efficient, having the smallest battery pack. Well, no. It's good, 16.7 kilowatt hours of electricity per 100k, that's its consumption. But the MG is slightly better. Officially, the MG has a fairly poor efficiency rating of like 18.1 kilowatt hours per 100K, but real world driving, I get around 17 kilowatt hours. However, the winner in terms of pure efficiency is this one. So listen up, fleet managers. This is the one that costs the least to run out of all of them. You're looking at 15.9 units of electricity per 100K. But enough about efficiency. Let's talk charging speed. And if you were to plug any of these three cars into a seven kilowatt wall, mounted charger in your garage and this is the one I have in mine it's an Evnex E2 charger in my opinion this is the best charger you can buy in New Zealand really recommended installing then you're looking at about seven hours for a full charge but one of these three cars unexpectedly can handle 11 kilowatts AC it's the cheapest one the Aura can handle 11 kilowatts which means you would need three phase power in your house to have an 11 kilowatt charger and most Kiwi homes don't have it but it's nice to know if you do stumble upon one the Aura will charge in about four hours from flat to full but what if you want to go on a road trip well this is where one of these rapid DC chargers from ChargeNet will save your bacon if you're going to get an electric car sign up with ChargeNet they have hundreds of rapid chargers all around New Zealand and they're going to double their network within three years so no going back in terms of electric cars and charging options to use one of these is pretty straightforward you grab the handle you plug it into your car you swipe your key fob and boom your car starts charging as for charging speed however well this is where the aura does not really shine it's an affordable car and it shows because even though this charger can handle up to 150 kilowatts the most I can get out of the aura is about 40 kilowatts peak and that's unfortunate because it means a charge from 20% to 80% full which is a typical amount on a road trip it's going to take about 45 minutes on one of these as for the BYD it charged a little bit quicker I managed to peak at 64 kilowatts which would mean the same charge would take 35 minutes but the MG was the fastest being able to to peak at 85 kilowatts which means the same charge from 20% to 80% would take just 30 minutes but now let's chuck these cars into some corners as for the Dolphin when it comes to cornering at speed this is a bit like a fish out of water sorry marine mammal out of water it doesn't really like the bumps as much as the MG or the Aura because it's designed more for comfort above all else and I respect that I do love a comfortable car so it's sticking to its values of getting you there in sublime comfort you won't regret buying this thing just don't throw it into the corners like you would with the MG Meanwhile, in the Aura, I've got the car set to sport mode and the handling set to sport mode and unfortunately, as much as I wanted this car to be rubbish for the camera, it's pretty good. It's not bad. I mean, it doesn't handle as well as, uh, for example, the MG4 handles, but it's still all right. But perhaps it's no surprise that my favorite out of the three, in terms of handling, in terms of happy compromise, is the MG4. I mean, the weight distribution the feeling that there's a wheel in each far corner it makes it feel so sure-footed you swing it into corners like this and it comes out and because oh it's rear wheel drive you can feel that power pushing you off instead of pulling you off it feels great and while I drive around with a stupid grin on my face let's do some point scoring starting with towing and the MG is the only one with a tow rating but that might change with the Dolphin soon stay tuned warranties are next and it's too wordy to read out but all three have industry leading warranties on the moving bits and the battery packs which let's be honest they'll outlast the cars themselves but I reckon the MG's warranty is the best for Kiwis that drive a lot speaking of future proofing only one of these cars has over-the-air software updates for new apps and safety upgrades and only one has a particulate matter filter to scrub the air of dangerous diesel smoke and pollution and only one has a heat pump included as standard 
And only one of these cars has a glass roof as standard. As for wireless phone charging, the MG does not have it, the BYD does, as you probably expect, and so does the Aura. Nice work. Safety's next, and which has the highest ANCAP scores? Well, they are all fortresses on wheels, but it's the Aura that just slips ahead. Well done, underdog. Although I do like that the Dolphin warns you, admittedly in kind of broken English, not to open the door if a car is coming, and that is cool. Speaking of safety, blind spot detection is also included on the Aura, as well as on the Dolphin, but not on the base model MG4. Next is fully adjustable steering wheels, and as you can see, every single car gets a point. Okay, this next one's weird, but it's important to me, and that is which seats are the least sweaty in summer. Well, the Aura's seats might look like felt, but they're actually not very breathable, and in the scorching sun, my back became moister than an oyster. The Dolphins are also synthetic, but they're full of breathable holes, which is good. And on the base model MG4, you'll be touching cloth every time you drive because of its breathable fabric seats. This is my favourite. Speaking of weird personal preferences, which has the indicator stalk on the correct side? Well, the Aura does not, neither does the MG, but the BYD does. Nice. And another weird thing that only I care about is which has the most satisfying window wipers. And the Auras are fine, they wipe most of the window. The BYDs, well, they leave a lot of glass unwiped with its stubby wipers. But it's the MG4 that gives the most satisfying clean with the blades almost touching the top. Yes, I'm weird, I know. And lastly, before we get back to driving, is which has the best sound system? done great wall. But now back to the cars and things that I hate about them. Starting with the MG, the thing I loathe the most about this car is the fact that it stays on when you finish driving it. When you get out of the car, it stays powered up. You can't drive the car, but toddlers can get in there and play with all the functions. Neighbors can get in there and change your radio presets. It's a bit annoying. As for the Dolphin, my biggest complaint is acceleration. Like right now, oh, there's no slouch, but it's taking a while to get up to speed. But what's interesting to me is that surely the motor in this car is exactly the same one as the long range Dolphin, which goes like a rocket ship. So I wonder if the power's just been throttled down a little bit. Any hackerologists out there able to hack this thing? As for the Aura, I don't like that slow DC charging speed. Also the delay in acceleration after mashing the accelerator and the braking delay when using one pedal driving give the car an unsatisfying driving feel. But the positives outweigh the negatives. Bang for buck, the Aura is unbeatable. It's got so much tech, yet it costs less and goes faster than any new Corolla. And on that note, let's tally the scores to find a winner. And there you have it, the winner in points alone is the Dolphin. But I'm torn, I mean my wallet wants me to buy the Aura, while my brain knows I should buy the BYD Dolphin, but my heart wants the MG4 in my garage. Thing is though, regardless of which of these three cars you wanted to win in this competition, they're all good cars. I know that sounds like an everyone gets a prize cop out, but they are decent machines. So my advice to you is use the information you've seen in this video to make a choice on which one you like the most and then go and test drive it. But be warned, you'll probably take it home.